So for part four of this uh, tabby cat reclining, I'm going <clears> to <throat> have a look at the detail in the cat's head, uh, in the eyes and the ears and the mouth. And the colour color for the eyes is quite a yellow colour. Um, this is a mixture of yellow, cabin yellow and yellow ochre and a little um, cerulean blue. I'm looking to put this on but leave um, leave out a highlight sort of crossing the upper part of the eye somewhere there just following the curve of the eye <coughs> the, to give the eye its glassy quality I would put another layer on top in the upper part which is likely to be more shaded um, a sort of shadow version of this colour. So there's going to be a little bit of a highlight on this eye, although it's less, less visible. I've got to leave that to dry before I can do any more to it. I'm using a number two, or oh, number three that is, uh, I was using a number two, uh, this little brush, number two round, and pinky colour in the ears. So this is a mixture of pale crimson and water and a little bit of yellow ochre. So it's interesting in the ears, ears there are, I don't want to put too much detail, detail into this, but there's a sort of lighter hairy um, part of the ear which I've previously protected with masking fluid. I'm going to try and dissolve that edge a little bit and paint into the so this is more conventional painting, paint, uh, painting wet on dry. Take that out of the tissue there. Pinky colour, pink colour, and the same in the other ear. But leaving a hairline gap along the edge of the ear, I think. So the nose is a is a brighter in this particular cat. It's quite a bright, sort of reddish brown colour, crimson, cadmium red, a little bit of ochre. It follows a contour. So the painting of the features in the face is very diff different from the other painting, the painting of the fur, which is a much looser approach. This nose just has a slightly darker edge to it, so it's a very dry, dark colour. I think there's a nostril just there somewhere, and there's a little bit of shadow, a little bit of darkness on that edge. And the lower jaw is in shadow, so I'm going to use just uh, mostly, that's mostly pale ultramarine. Give this effect of shadow here. <coughs> that's ultramarine, it has got a little bit of ochre in it I think, yep. And that's just to show that's more in shadow. So hopefully this is, this the eye part is now dried. And I can have a look at the um, shadow cast. Typically, in any eye, there's a shadow cast by the upper eye, the eyelid, onto the um, sort of transparent, the lens of the eye, and that's um, only goes up as far as the sort of top part of the eye there. Yeah doesn't go any lower than that and that is a lost edge there so we try and give that with a damp brush. This is <coughs> has a little bit of blue added to it, this previous yellow mix. Slightly darker there. In the ear there is a little more depth of shadow by adding um, 
ultramarine to that pinky grey colour I had. So there's a shape in here that's... I never really liked cat's ears very much, at least looking into them, but there's, there's a shadowy, darker shape in here. And then this, trying to paint into the... You can paint what you're not painting, which is the hairs. Into this bit too, and then try and leave that edge to the against again against fur and hairs. A little bit of shadow in there, leaving that gap. So typically, it's what you don't paint is as significant. In the um, pupil of the eye, which is nearly closed in this cut, there is a lighter upper part, which is more bluish, then this gap of highlight. I'm going to do this in stages. So that's the pupil, I think. And same with the other one. This looks much darker, this other one. I'm still going to leave that highlight uh, across the eye. And then there's the dark marking around the edge of the eye, which is significant and just frames the eye. So this is a concentrated mixture of ultramarine ochre and crimson. Again, the number two brush with a fine point. I'm going to try and draw into the rim of the eye. The upper part is broken by overhanging fur difficult to see that consistently. And around here, it's all a bit darker in there. And then this sort of tear duct that looks also darker. It's about there. It should be darker there. Darker in the lower part of this eye. I am waiting for things to dry off a bit while I'm doing this, so rotating around and not working in the same place um, whilst, you know, to give this, well, to give it a chance to dry. <clears throat> so, the lower part of the pupil, I think, is darker. It's just this little bit of difference. And that that's, looks all pretty dark. Um, not much of a trace of an edge there. There is some edge just there. There's a mouth also, which has got a little bit of a grey edge. So there's a gap there. This is a slightly stronger grey mix. A little bit of drawing in here. It's not terribly clear what's happening there, but there is something, some sort of edge there. And while I'm looking at this, I'm going to try and repair some of the further detail in the head. And that would include um, a little bit of marking here below this eye to give this some definition. Just a soft edge there. So I want to try and create more difference between hard and soft edges. So there's a with slightly deeper marking here that gives this definition to the side of the nose and that's on damp with a sort of brownish mix somewhere in there so trying to make a hard edge against the outline edge of the eye let's take a larger brush and soften that edge a little bit, soften that edge. So this is a blurred edge and also here. That's quite a distinctive edge against the nose. I'm going into the nose there. This is a rounded shape and that therefore should have a little more of a cylindrical look.
and here also a bit of colour. A bit more colour there too possibly. But the face is the main focus of this painting. Then I've got to I'm just looking at where I can add or contribute something to the definition of the face. Uh, also, let's run that colour out. Glazes in watercolour, that would be a glaze, which is a translucent mix that goes on top of colour that's already there. I'm trying to warm up this colour in the head, in the side of the head. Glaze on the nose. So glazing is very useful if colour requires intensifying or enriching, just going over the top without changing the colour there. So that's the end of part four and I'm looking to paint the background in part five.